Hi, I'm Rosie and I'm a Brighton-based photographer. And in this course, we're going to be teaching you how to take photos using just your phone. We're going to be looking at the main principles that I use when taking photos. This includes framing, lighting, texture and focus and can be applied whether you're shooting indoors or outdoors like we are today. In the second video, we're going to be looking at how we can edit our photos on our phone to give you the tools to start thinking about how you might want to edit yours. I think it's important to say at this point that it doesn't matter what equipment you have, the best camera that you can have is the one that you have in your hand ready to go. It's about trusting your instincts, using your eye and practicing. Step one, check your kit. Before I leave for any shoot, I need to make sure that my battery is charged, I've got enough storage on my phone and that my lens is clean. To clean my lens, I like to use a cloth like this, which is what you use to clean glasses, but anything will do, a t-shirt, scarf, whatever you've got to hand. Today, I'm gonna to be using the native camera on my phone, which is an iPhone. But there's some really cool apps that you can download for iPhone and for Android that you can play around with a little bit more when taking photos. I can highly recommend an app called Moment for iPhone or Snapseed for Android. Step two, lighting. Lighting can really influence what a photo looks like. Natural light can give a completely different look to artificial light, such as tungsten light, which you might find in a lamp or a ceiling light. A lot of the time, you might not have an option which lighting source you have, but play around and experiment and get used to both. It might be that you find a certain light source that you prefer. I love using natural light and try and use it whenever possible. Have a think about where your light source is coming from and how it might light your subject. For instance, you might want to light your subject from behind so that you get a silhouette effect, or perhaps you might want to light your subject from the front so that it has a nice wash of light and everything's even. The main thing is, is to experiment and don't be afraid to play around. And if it's not working, just move on. Step three, framing and textures. With framing, a good place to start is the rule of thirds. This is a framing concept that breaks up your frame into nine imaginary parts. The idea with this is that our eyes enjoy seeing the most important part of an image in the third of a frame. For example, I'm right in the middle of this frame and I have a third either side of me. On an iPhone and an Android, you can go into your camera settings on your phone and apply this grid onto your display. You don't have to use it all the time, but I just find it really helpful. When framing a shot, have a think about the textures that you want to include as well. For example, these trees look really great against the smooth sky, but against other trees, they don't stand out as well. Step four, practice. Have fun and experiment. If something isn't working, don't worry, just try approaching it from a different angle. Some of the best mistakes I've made when out taking photos have been some of my favourite photos, and you never know what they're going to look like when you get home to edit them. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you shoot, the easier these steps will be to follow. Let's go shoot. I'm now going to be taking a picture of this lovely soft yellow scarf behind me, and I'm going to be using natural light as my light source. Now, I've got these shutters here that when I move, they affect the amount of light that comes in and out, which could be quite good to play around with. What's really cool already is that you can see the lines of the blinds. So I'm going to tap on the scarf here, and that's me making it be in focus. If you don't know how to focus your phone, have a look online and there's going to be loads of information specific for the make and model that will uh, help you through. I'm going to frame it. So what I might do is have it in the majority of the left hand side. So it's kind of hitting the centre here and then you've got the lines across there. I'm just going to take a picture here now. And then, if you don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a yellow sun symbol on my screen. Now, when I hold that down, that's going to bring the exposure down. Now, exposure is the amount of light the lens is letting in. And the more exposure you have, the more light that's being let in, which might be helpful if you're shooting uh, sunset or in, in, I don't know, somewhere that's got some lots of shadows. Um, or if you're taking pictures on a really sunny day, it might be really good to bring the exposure down to let less of that light in so your subjects aren't as bright. For this next shot, we've got our lovely assistant here. And what I'm gonna do here is I wanna move around her and see what looks best. So here, because the sun's coming from here, this side of her face is a bit shaded, but that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna have her in the right hand side of the frame 
oddly she's looking right at me which is a bit scary but that's okay so this looks great because the sun is bouncing off her face and this side is lit and this side is a little bit in the shade so it just looks a little bit more interesting and it's really good to learn how to shoot people as well because say if you're taking pictures of a textiles project or a performance or uh, a musician or just for drawing and art like it's just really good to get to know how to work with people i just want to take this opportunity to thank edna for uh, giving up her time for us today my next photo i'm going to be taking a picture of this vase now it's got a very reflective surface so it's going to be interesting to see how it works with the light and i'm also lighting it with an artificial light so i've got a lamp here now you can see that this is in the third of my screen as well, like we spoke about in framing. And the leaves in the background are getting really nice textures from this like smooth, shiny surface. And then in the background, it's quite an absorbent sort of matte surface. And then also the, the wall as well looks quite nice. And also this leather bottom as well. So I'm going to take one more picture. So here we've got quite a nice depth of field as well. And a shallow depth of field is when you have just the one thing in focus. And can you see the plant behind is out of focus? And basically to create a, a shallower depth of field, having the object as far away from anything else as possible will achieve this. Now I spoke before about texture. What we could do in this is we could put the vase a bit further back and bring this plant in see if we can shoot the vase through that so that looked pretty cool make sure the vase is in focus I might come down a little bit make sure the vase is in focus brill and how about going through the leaves as well that's quite cool Okay, so now the light's gone down a little bit, I'd really like to take some pictures of this boiling kettle on this fire, because the smoke looks really cool as well. So I'm gonna get quite low for this. I think for this, I'm gonna bring the exposure down because it highlights the flames in the woods there. Also what's nice is that there's so much distance behind it in terms of focus and depth of field. This is definitely going to be the main focus. Cool, so to line it up I've got the kettle right in the centre. If you can see the grid there, it's right in the centre. And I'm just tapping it, which on an iPhone focuses it. I'm just going to take a few pictures here. Look at that. So that's the end of the first video. I've got all my photos. It's time for you to go out and take your photos. I'll see you over in the next video where I'll be teaching you how to edit your photos in your phone.